going to find out about SEO. So we could do SEO tips. What else can we look for? Search tips. Ah, search optimization. Not in, any others? Increase web view. Keywords. Oh, great one. And uh, my automatic spell checker is kicking in. And I'm just going to throw this one out here. This is a great one. Google Analytics. So be bold. Use the B tag around around what keywords. keywords there's those darn keywords again okay well that answers hunter that answers our question bye all right who's next go ahead make your earls more search engine friendly do they tell you how to do that You want to read through it and then get back to me, Andrew? Okay. I just need one example. Social bookmarking. How we and how, well, how are we going to do that? And can anybody just shout out what one of those widgets might be like? Facebook, yeah, like like thumbs up Facebook, right? Or I like Facebook, or I like. You've all seen those, right? Just a little note here on Facebook. When you do a thumbs up on Facebook, of course, depending upon your privacy clickings uh, settings, uh, the one of the 250 privacy settings, make sure you get them exactly right. <clears throat> but when you click on I like and a company, Facebook automatically reserves the right to use you as a, a, a proponent for that company. So if I click that I like McDonald's, or and I, I like McDonald's, so let's say I click on Burger King and I clicked I like just out of a whim one day, then Facebook could use my name and face on a Burger King ad and say, you know, Peter Johnson says he likes Burger King. I'd have no clue that this was happening. So know when you click the I like buttons that you're kind of opening yourself up as promoting that product, even when you don't know you're promoting that product. Yes, absolutely. The power of Facebook now, uh, not for you all, but for the advertisers, why is Facebook worth billions of dollars right now? It isn't because of you all directly. It's because of advertising, and they know so much about so many people that they can target advertising so if I'm going to advertise for computer careers on building web pages in the Mankato region, I can zero in on that exactly and hit everybody that showed any kind of interest in that area in the Mankato region. So all of a sudden, my marketing dollars, my advertising dollars are focused on that one segment of people. Now, because Facebook has millions of people, then that still gives me a really nice cross-section. So it's no longer that the web is like a global marketing engine. It's also a neighborhood marketing engine. And it's because they have this huge, huge terabytes and terabytes of data about every single person that's on Facebook. Except me. They don't have much on me. All they have is stuff on the web explorations. Now, this isn't necessarily bad. So if I don't want to see a whole bunch of weight loss ads... I might see a whole bunch of ads on building web pages or doing t uh, technical stuff. Well, I kind of like that. Uh, if I'm going to see ads, I want to see ads of things I'm interested in. You know, coffee, chocolate, stuff like that. So, so this is a good and a bad thing, but you need to know the ramifications of, of what's happening out there right now. All right, we're getting away from SEO. Let's Give me another one. Oh, Andrew, did you come up with uh, how to make those earls friendly? Oh, so we could say uh, puppy health 
Dot-com is more friendly than what? Oh, 19935 uh, HTML, right? Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I see. So make, make it really clear of what's happening. Yep. Yep. Oh, good to know. Now, I'm going to show you that. You notice we've been naming our pages index. So I'm going to show you that because if the person doesn't have to type in index, it's going to be a lot, lot friendlier than if they have to type in a, a long file name. That's a good one. All right, who's next? Keywords in uh, title. And I'm going to add to that h1 and throughout the body. Do they have any warnings about what not to do? All right, if anybody gets to that, uh, bring that up because that's really important because you don't want to overdo it because you don't want to get booted off. <laughs> don't fill your meta tags with a bunch of worthless keywords. All right, that's a good one. Target what? Unique keywords. Uh, Google has an application, um, and you can do a search for Google Keywords. They have an application where you can find out the most popular keywords that people are typing in and how often they're used on the web. So what you want is you want things, you want to find information about that people are asking about that nobody has web pages on and then create web pages for that. That's a great way to build up a business. All right, who's, who's number seven? Don't put similar or identical content on different pages. Make every page unique. All right, good ones. All right, use particular keywords. In the back row here, do you want to do a search for SEO and uh, HTML val or XHTML valid. One of you do, do that. All right, number nine. Linking back with Google Docs or any other web page, especially experts or popular pages in the same industry. All right, 10. Where are your visitors coming from? What keywords? Are those keywords keep coming up, don't they? Are they using? And how, how are we going to do that? What tool are we going to use to do that? Alexa they, or Google? Oh, how do you spell Alexis? E, is it? A L E X A. There's Alexa and Google Tool. Oh, well, I'm going to say Google Analytics, okay? Because it's a better thing. Now, what Google Analytics is, is it's a little block of JavaScript you put on the bottom of every single page. And when it, somebody visits it, it sends information about that visitor to Google. You log in with your user ID password into Google Analytics. And then you can get charts and maps, and you can see everything that's happening about your web page. You can see when people visit, like, like you might see a pattern of everybody's visiting your site from midnight till 3 in the morning, or what region of the world they're coming from, what browser they're using, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Alexa does much the same thing. Um, I haven't used Alexa, so I can't tell you too much about it. Uh, I've been waiting for that one. These, by the way, these aren't in any, any particular order. Keep your content updated. Google loves change. So that's why I do a blog. I do a new entry, hopefully every week, 
but every couple weeks, I'm automatically changing my website. So keep your up, your, you, you can't let a website just sit because then it's, it's going to drop its SEO. Oh, oh that's, you're going to do two, aren't you? Okay, make link text descriptive. Link here is almost worthless. View our uh, online syllabus for pro programming fundamentals is much better. And if you all look on my YouTube videos, open up the description and you'll see that I put links in there and all kinds of keywords. I've loaded up my description on YouTube with keywords pointing back to our Computer Careers website. Obsess, uh, somebody help me, obsessive, no, two Bs, obsess, there, oh, I see, I just had a little, little glitch there, with your page ranking, yeah, I have some clients, they have to be number one, but you're saying, All right, good to know. Okay, good. Have an about us section. Yeah, so be transparent. Be transparent with business. Uh, what, what do I want to say? Uh, business, yeah. Contact info. Now, this isn't talking about your birthday or what you did across the street or your girlfriend or anything. This is business. This is all professional information. You want to keep it real professional. And I think that's a really key point, that the difference between, you know, I, I, uh, I, had, I had a great birthday party yesterday or this is, these are all my kids. Here's pictures of all. That's a better example. These are pictures of all my kids and their names and their birthdays. You don't want to put that on the pages. Or this is this is our uh, these are all the kids that were in the kindergarten um, in 2010. Um, you want to keep that, all that off, but all your contact information is really really valuable to have out there, and it should be on every single page, because you never know what page people are going to look at. Let's do about two more. What's the name of that site? Uh, and sp is it C L I C dot T A L E? Uh, C L I C K T A L E. T A L E dot com. Mm -hmm. Look, look on your URL at the top, at the web address, the very top. Okay, but look at the web address in the very, very top and see what it sh shows after the HTTP. What does it say? Okay, so that's one. Now, I'm going to talk about, earlier I talked about making these more readable, so you can see by making that T and that C, that will work just as well. Oh, forget the .com. But this is a tricky website because when somebody says it over the phone, are they saying tail or T-A, are they saying T-A-L-E or T-A-I-L? Or, or who knows? People will even spell this T A L L. I can bet you. So you got you choosing a good domain name is really, really tricky. And that should really go on the top of your list. This is the main reason that I keep harping on having zero errors and zero warnings. Because if you have a broken page with errors and warnings, then Google is going to get lost because it's only a computer program. 
if you have valid XHTML code, then Google can navigate the page really quickly, really fast, and very accurately. So if you don't have matching tags, if they're not nested, all the things that can go wrong is going to throw Google off, and you're not going to get good search engine results. So this is a really, really critical one. That's a nice one to end up with.